Right now we're doing a Dodge commercial. Oh. So as, as soon as I let you, as soon as I get the word, I'll let you know. Grand River is the longest street in Detroit as it stretches for 15 and a half miles inside the city. Outside of the city, it stretches way longer than that. It was signed as U.S. Route 16 back in the day, and it actually travels all the way to the Lake Michigan shoreline in Muskegon for a complete distance of 210 miles. Today, the U.S. 16 route has been decommissioned and I-96 parallels the entire route. However, there's still some state route signage along the way. For this video, I only drive Grand River from the Detroit suburb of Howell all the way into downtown Detroit. The distance is just over 50 miles. Along the way, not only do I interrupt a Dodge commercial that's being filmed along Grand River, but I also go through a few of Detroit's nicer suburbs. Wait, you're saying that Detroit has nice places? Yeah, when you're talking about Metro Detroit. In fact, most of Detroit's suburbs are really good places to live, work, and play. Metro Detroit actually saw a slight population gain during the 2020 census count, despite the city continuing to lose a double-digit percentage of population. We can talk more about each suburb and county that we pass through as we go along. Meanwhile, if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoy this video, then make sure to check out my custom made interactive map that shows you all of the places that I've made videos on so far. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and all of those links are down below. So yes, Howell, Michigan. It's the county seat of Livingston County. The city itself might not show incredible wealth or anything, but the areas that surround Howell are really wealthy suburban areas. The 2020 census showed that Livingston County saw a 7% population increase since 2010, which isn't a huge population growth rate, but it's a decent one nonetheless. Other counties that border Livingston also saw some decent growth rates, and in Howell, Niche.com ranks the public schools as a B, and the crime rates are below average. And as we pass through the downtown area of Howell, I'll slow it down so that you can get a better glimpse. For a more in-depth video on Howell or any of the suburbs that I pass through, subscribe to my channel and look for those videos to come in the future. Even though we've left the city limits of Howell, there's still quite a bit of commercial and other types of suburban development. The next city that we come across is Brighton, which isn't too far up ahead.
And right around here, we hit another hot spot for commercial development right before we enter the city limits of Brighton. Brighton is similar to Howell, where it's considered to be a nice, quiet place to live. Also, just like with Howell, the data might not make Brighton look like it's full of wealth or anything, but the areas that surround Brighton within Livingston County are all considered to be really nice places to live, and that's reflected in the data for Livingston County. Crime in Brighton is basically non-existent, and the public schools are rated as an A on Niche.com. And here is the downtown area of Brighton. Since Grand River was one of Michigan's earliest highways, it serves as the main street for mostly all of the towns that it passes through along its original route. Thank you. 
Here we enter Oakland County, which is the second largest county in Michigan by population. Just like with Livingston County, Oakland County has seen decent population growth during the last decade. Oakland County is also one of the richest counties in the United States when you factor in counties that have over 1 million people living in it. It has many nice places to live throughout its boundaries. The city of Detroit might be on its own level of economic struggle when compared to most other large U.S. cities, but this region historically has been one of the most segregated metro areas in the country. With all of the poverty and blight that comes within the city of Detroit, you have just as much wealth that spread throughout Detroit suburbs, and a good chunk of that wealth can be found in Oakland County. Mostly all of the cities in Oakland County are considered to be incredibly safe, as most cities show a very low crime rate. The downside to Oakland County is that it's more expensive to live here than it is for the rest of the state. But if a place is considered to be nice to live in, then that's what you're going to get. Meanwhile, Lyon Township has been one of the fastest growing areas in Metro Detroit over the last 20 years. New housing developments continue to sprawl up throughout the area, and most of the new houses will cost you a fortune. The crime rates here are basically non-existent, and the public schools are some of the best that you'll find in the state. This is the unincorporated town of New Hudson within Lyon Township, and to the left is the New Hudson Inn, and it's the historic building in town. There's a little mini downtownish area here that never really came to be about, but not much else to this place, as far as I know. Now we have entered Wixom, which historically has been known for its giant Wixom assembly plant that was operated by Ford. The plant was in operation from 1957 through 2007 when it closed. If you ever owned a Ford Thunderbird from 2002 to 2005, or a Ford GT from 2005 to 2006, or the Lincoln Town Car from 1981 to 2007, your car was made here. There were many other car models made here as well, but I'm not going to list them all. Wixom is a more affordable place to live in comparison to the surrounding suburbs, and just like the other places nearby, Wixom is a safe area that has really good public schools. Also, if you like cars, maybe you can find Doug DeMuro doing a car review driving his car down Wixom Road. Yeah, I actually noticed that one time during one of his car review videos. He was driving right here in Wixom, Michigan. Well, now we're in Novi, which has been one of the more popular suburbs for most people to want to move to in recent years. Novi offers some of the best shopping in Metro Detroit, and it has one of the more popular malls to shop at in the region. It also provides great public schools and is a very safe community to live in.
Farmington Hills is another great place for people to live as it's another safe community and it provides highly rated public schools. Farmington Hills is an older suburb than Novi and the others that we have gone through so far since entering Oakland County, but that's because Farmington Hills is closer to the city. A lot of Farmington Hills was built up from the 1960s through the 80s, whereas Novi didn't really start to be developed until the 80s. Farmington is a separate city from Farmington Hills, but it's often thought of as the same place, generally speaking. Farmington was a town that was here before all of the suburban development was, and just like with the hills, Farmington is a safe place to live, and the public schools are top-notch.
Well, now we've ditched Farmington and we're back in the hills technically. The rest of this stretch through Farmington Hills is full of older housing off of grid streets. And before the cities of Farmington Hills and nearby Livonia became to be a thing, this was actually called Clarenceville. There's still a Clarenceville Public School District as well. I actually lived right around here when I was a kid. We moved around a lot afterwards and I would tell people that I hailed from 8 Mile, as it's not that far away. It gave me a status booster every now and then, even though this area isn't that bad and the only really bad part of 8 Mile is about 20 miles east of here. Kinda shows you just the media narrative that's been thrown out on Detroit, cause if you head west of here on 8 Mile Road, once we approach it, it's a really nice place just like the places that we just went through. And if I had lived off of the nicer areas of 8 Mile west of here in Farmington Hills, Livonia, or Northville even, then I could have said the same thing and got the same reaction. Kind of funny. Oh man, must be in the hood, right? Eight Mile Road. Not quite yet. Almost, but not quite. Well, we're in Wayne County now, the same county that Detroit is in, as 8 Mile serves as the boundary line for Oakland and Wayne County. If you were to draw a horizontal line across the state of Michigan along the line of 8 Mile, it actually serves as the county border throughout the whole state. If you were to draw a horizontal line across Lake Michigan from the same line that follows 8 Mile Road, it actually serves as the boundary line between the states of Illinois and Wisconsin. 8 Mile historically has also been referred to as Baseline Road, as there's a non-continuous roadway that follows this line across the state. In the other parts of the state, 8 Mile is called Baseline Road. However, we're now in Redford Township, which is an older suburb, and despite the decent median household income, the median value of owner-occupied housing units is really low. Crime is decently high as well, and the public schools are rated pretty low. Despite that, Redford Township saw a population gain over the last 10 years, probably because the housing stock is really cheap, and that's what some people can only afford. And now we're in Detroit, but this far northwestern part of Detroit mostly isn't horrible. You'll see up ahead that after this ugly stretch of weird telephone poles in the median that there's actually a decent neighborhood with businesses on both sides of Grand River that are open and doing well. Well, here we go through the old Redford neighborhood. It actually used to be its own town before all the development took over in Detroit. And to the left, if you head north on Losser, you can come across the old Redford Theater. Look for that in an upcoming video in my Detroit series. As we head further southeast, we'll be going through the Rosedale Park neighborhood, which is a decent neighborhood. The neighborhood supports a healthy middle-class population.
Up here is the ancient Tower Center Mall. It's amazing that it survived throughout the years, really, but that it has. And the rest of this stretch of Grand River from here to downtown has seen better days.
And it's hard to see from here, but the road is closed up ahead, so I had to make a turn. What's going on? Right now we're doing a Dodge commercial. Oh. So as, as soon as I let you, as soon as I get the word, I'll let you. Well, you can see why Dodge would want to film a commercial off of Grand River as the skyline provides for a nice backdrop along Grand River. Nasty water main break here though, which is pretty typical for the city of Detroit. This building is the old 8th Precinct Police Station, which was built in 1901 and it served as a police station until the 1950s. In 1973, it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places due to its architecture. Currently, it's being remodeled for residential use, or so they say. And here you can see the Motor City Casino to the right, and as soon as we pass that, we will be in downtown. Well, that's about it for this video, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes, so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Detroit playlist, my Michigan playlist, or in my Detroit Spoke Streets playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!